Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Medical Marijuana and Wellness Webinar Series. Uh, this quarter series is, uh, we're very excited about it. We have a number of great topics, including tonight's topic on CBD for you and your pets. It's been a topic that a lot of people have asked us for and, and brought up in the past. And uh, I'm honored to say that uh, I feel great to introduce a gentleman by the name of Dr. Tony Ferrari, who is the Chief Science Officer for SunMed and really an expert on CBD. So Tony, uh, thank, well, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mark. Very really excited about this. Yeah, I, uh, I I have to tell you, we um, we're very excited about working with and carrying the, the SunMed products. It's been amazing to me how good they are. But uh, I think uh, what I want to do before we begin is just do a couple of housekeeping things. I do want to point out to everyone that uh, this quarter we do have a new series. Um, you can see that we have a number of different topics coming up. Uh, next week will be ketamine, and then we get into more of the medical marijuana phase. Um, we're going to do uh, medical marijuana 101, uh, anxiety and stress. You can see the, the topics that are there. And it's going to finalize by having a seminar live in the villages. This will be an actual seminar itself. So there's going to be two sessions, one at 930 and one at 130. So please join us for that. Um, if you take a look at your screen, you'll see at the bottom of your screen a little Q&A button. If you have any questions, please click there and ask us. We are here to answer your questions. And there is no question that's too simple or that's too dumb. Uh, really, there's, this whole topic is just so new. Uh, a lot of people are frustrated just trying to find some place to ask a question and get it out. So please feel free, feel, feel free to bring that out. Um, I will point out that some people put it in chat. and We will kind of monitor that, but we pay attention to the Q&A button first. So please feel, feel free to do that. Um, so let's dive right into it. Uh, Tony, tell me a little bit about yourself. I know that when I met you, I was very impressed with your background. Um, you actually have, have gone through a lot, of, you've been doing a lot of work in this particular field and uh, been involved in, 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 let's just say, medical and medical research for a while, right? Yeah, so I have kind of a, I feel like most um, scientists in this space have sort of a impact that drives them to, you know, go after this pursuit. But for me, um, it was sort of random at first. Um, but really my background, I always wanted to start, like solve you know, difficult problems. So I started doing like fuel cell alternative energy research at Ithaca College with General Motors and Cornell. Um, and then I moved over to microwave research in FSU, which again was kind of targeting coal and energy. Um, and just it just so happened that when I was doing that work, I used uh, an instrument that is what is used every single day in the hemp industry. So. I, I, my background's in analytical chemistry. That's what my PhD is in. So actually understanding how to measure and test plant material, that's really my background into this field. So I started there with this company. I uh, moved back to Florida with my wife and she's getting her PhD in neuroscience here in Tampa. Um, and so basically from there, I wanted to work with a company that really cared about quality control and testing. So I started with SunMed. Um, we had 12 stores at that time, and we've grown to over 400 um, uh, franchise locations in 40-something states right now in the U.S. So we're, we're technically the second largest hemp um, retailer um, by volume right now in the U.S. Um, and I think a lot of it comes down to the passion that we have for our customers. And then also for our sto store owners, they all want to jump in and help their communities as well. So um, that's really been my background. Um, I was the first hire at SunMed. So I've really, <laughs> really helped in a lot of different areas of like compliance and lobbying and understanding payment processing and all that stuff. So it's a lot of stuff I've been doing, but my core focus right now is um, quality control and research and formulation at the company. I, I think don't underestimate uh, the quality of your products. I mean, we, we evaluated a lot of products, more than 50. And you came out on top of the on, on top. Uh, I think that's important because I think you, you can do a lot of great things around it, but if the quality of the product's not there, it's not going to stand up. And I I really compliment you on what you guys do. Now, the good news you got product quality. It may not be the cheapest, but it works. And when it comes to your health, I think a few extra dollars to make sure you have that that healthy approach. I think is always is always a wise decision. Yeah, and I think um, you know having really good analysis on the material is good for compliance and like you know being able to sell in all these different states but the reason that i'm so passionate about it is like when you find a product that works to your point sometimes you're not going to get that the next batch and you don't really know what's going on with the cannabinoid profile or the terpene profile so we we care a lot about that side of it 
so that our our customers can get the same stuff every single time and then even go to their physician and be like here's what i'm taking can you understand what's going on (laughs) you know start that conversation and it really starts with like a lab report honestly yeah well, listen, I know that uh, you've been involved in a lot of research projects. I think CBD is uh, probably one of the most hyped um, products out on the market today. I think there's not anywhere that you go, you don't see it, an ad or some sort of a reference to it. And I think there's a lot we're learning about it. Uh, but what I really like about what you all have done, and I want to impress everybody, is you've done a lot of research into this, this, this topic um, as, as a professional, not only just looking at the... the um, folks in general, uh, CBD for you and your pets, but also with athletes in a number of other areas, right? Yeah. So we're, um, one of our approaches towards research was to try to find uh, a population that is an extreme case of what the general public would maybe feel. So athletes are perfect for that because they endure a lot of pain and, you know, inflammation and they have a lot of like sleep issues and things like that. Um, so if we can kind of work in those areas, it's almost like the extreme case. And then we can kind of figure out from there how the general public should use this stuff. So our goal is to work with healthcare practitioners and athletic trainers. They work with athletes every single day. They're the ones dealing with protocols and recovery and recommending them supplements and things like that. So um, we're really excited to work. We have sleep studies, we have anxiety studies, um, pain and recovery. And then we even have like test taking for university students and stuff like that does an increased focus and in different cannabinoids um not just cbd is part of our focus too um in those research endeavors so yeah we've when i first started i called up usf and there was you know i, I was trying to get an intern to just work in the lab with me and i couldn't even get that to happen and now we have uh, you know three or four universities that we really are you know sort of trying to choose who we want to spend the research dollars with. So it's more of like, a, you know, they're, they're starting to see that this is valuable for the future um, for like, you know, this stuff isn't going to go away. It's only going to get more intense. So the job market and, and getting, you know, some good research started as a university is a good way to start and recruit um, sure. the future industry leaders. So. Right. And, and, and what I like is, is um, you know, you're, you're studying a lot of different areas that are really important, pain, sleep, inflammation, things like that. So let's, let's, let's kind of step back for a moment. When a lot of people say cannabis, a lot of people, at least, and I'm in the business, they say, what's the big deal? I mean, why cannabis? Why is it all? Why is it important? And I tend to always start by looking at the nervous system. I know we all know what a nervous system is. We've heard about it. We've seen it. It's the way your body communicates. I, I look at the, the uh, nervous system as the cell phone system within your body. And I know we all know it's there. And if something happens, you bang your finger, you, you cut yourself, you, you injure yourself, you know, that nervous system will tell the brain that there's a problem. And, the, and of course, you know, Houston, we have a problem. The question is, what I've always found fascinating is, what did the brain do with it? What did Houston do with it? And what's fascinating is through the research into medical cannabis, we have brought to light the fact that, that we have an endocannabinoid system in our body. And our nervous system has been handing over to the endocannabinoid system uh, the, 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 the symptoms. And the endocannabinoid system is what's used by our body to help us heal, or, uh, heal ourselves or put ourselves into a whole state of homeostasis. And I think, uh, Tony, maybe you can help me here. Not only do we have it as a human being in mammals, but also it's in pets and dogs, right? Pets and cats. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually even more, it's like, it's in fish as well. <laughs> That's something oh, really? that I didn't know. Yeah. So it goes <laughs> all the way to like um, um, non-mammals as well, but yeah, it's core to the, to the mechanisms um, that we understand for mammals and, and dogs, especially. So it, again, it's one of those hidden systems that has been discovered, and now now there's a bunch of focus towards it. So uh, I think it's really important that people understand that the pathway and the system that it functions on is unique to cannabinoids. Yeah, and this is basically how your body manages your anxiety, your memory, your appetite, your inflammation, your your immune system. It, it manages a lot of components. We'll talk about some of those as we talk about CBD. But what we're talking about is something that when you look at it, um, Cannabis represents a, a basically it's a whole medicine cabinet. Uh, you have 450 different medical properties. You have 100 different 20 different cannabinoids. There's 100 different terpenes. That we, these are the ones we know about. There's actually more than that. Um, and you can see there's there's a lot of different components to it. We're going to be specifically talking about CBD, but 
What's fascinating is when you have CBD and you put just a little bit, just a touch of uh, THC in there, you get something called the entourage effect. And what that means is that in essence, one in one is three that you get a, if you're going after pain or inflammation, especially inflammation, it does a better job by having just a touch of THC, having a full spectrum product than a regular product. And you've seen a lot of that in your studies, haven't you? Yeah. And there's been some great stuff that just came out very recently showcasing this um, with anxiety, um, um, showing the large difference between an isolate, which is having no terpenes at all, and just having those terpenes present as an extract. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think that those are really, that, that should change how people perceive, you know, the costing and all the stuff that goes into a good cannabis product is what, what, how much of the plant components does it have? And what are those plant components so that you can, you know, better track what's going on and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Well, I know that, I know that uh, uh, I myself, whenever I come and I have a problem like inflammation, I want to get something that's the best possible product to address it. Uh, you know, kind of a half solution really isn't the answer for me. Um, and I know cannabis has really helped me quite a bit, especially CBD. Uh, I'm, I use quite a bit of CBD on a daily basis because I have seven herniated discs in my neck and two in my back and to keep the inflammation down, keeps me, keeps me functional. Best way of putting it. Um, yeah. And it, it improves, you know, improving sleep is a good example of like, maybe not an entourage effect, right? Because it's not those compounds, but it is a systemic yeah. approach. I think that's the other key is like, you have this, the more plant components that are there, it seems we have better therapeutic outcomes, but it's also because like you said, it's hitting all of the ECS at once and hitting all of the endocannabinoid system parts and, and regulating those issues at once. Great. Now I know that um, when we talked about homeostasis and really homeostasis is where your body goes into a state of balance. In other words, that's what your body is. That's what your help. That's what your endocannabinoid system is trying to do is help your body get back in the balance. There's a couple of terms that come into play here. When you're trying to understand why CBD is important, how it helps both you and your pets, um, we have what they call endocannabinoids. That's what we produce as a human being. We are, in essence, a cannabis plant. We produce endocannabinoids, and they get distributed throughout your body to be able to address whatever issues that are out there. But also in the plant itself, the cannabis plant itself, you have what they call phytocannabinoids. And phytocannabinoids are structurally identical to the endocannabinoids. That's what makes it really fascinating. What you're doing is you're giving your body the resources it needs to be able to address its issue. Because for two reasons, one is it takes a while for you, if you discover you have a problem, it may take a while for your body to produce the endocannabinoids, that you, enough of it to need to address that issue. And then also, if you're an older person like myself, I'm a senior citizen, I'm not producing the endocannabinoids that I was producing before when I was 20, 30, and 40 years old. So by being able to supplement it, being able to add those to my body, what I'm doing is, in essence, I'm charging my battery. I'm giving it the resources it needs to be able to, uh, to address itself. You've kind of seen that in a lot of your studies where people are using the phytocannabinoids to address a lot of different issues, for example, like migraines and, and arthritis, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the length of time for homeostasis is going to vary by person and um that's sort of like genetic based but then there are also like external factors like trauma or you know um maybe you lost your job you know uh, things like that can all impact um this system because it's so sensitive when it comes to um anxiety and things like that um messing like cortisol is a hormone that gets produced that negatively impacts a non-demide um and anandamide is the one endogenous cannabinoid that we have a pretty good handle on. It's produced when we jog for runner's high, anandamide comes through. So yeah. those are, I think that's important to note too, is like you may figure out homeostasis one decade previously or something like that. And then next decade, it could be different. Next month, it could be different. Sure. Um, you know, your diet will affect some of this stuff. So yeah. um, it's a very sensitive system, but I think the, the core understanding of homeostasis makes you continue until you find some sort of a balance point after, you know, X amount of weeks of trying. And I, and I can tell you by being able to use it and, and find how much, how much I take and when I take it, how many times a day and how much I take, which I call a regime, um, finding that is the difference between really uh, getting your life back and suffer. And, and that's been yep. my case that's here. Now we also hear about, um, cannabidiol, CBD, and we also hear about THC that's in the cannabis plant itself. Um, I don't want to dive down into THC too much, although I do want to mention that it's there. 
What I'd much rather do is why don't you take us through and, and, and tell us you, your products are primarily hemp-based CBD products, and there are marijuana-based CBD products as well. But tell us a little bit about the differences between hemp and marijuana, because I think a lot of people don't realize that hemp CBD and marijuana CBD is basically identical. Yeah, biologically speaking, they're the exact same species of plant. Um, they're just sort of bred differently. So um, I, I, I often liken it to like hemp nowadays, industrial hemp, that's 0.3% or less, is probably close to what marijuana was in the 70s, closer to that. And nowadays, marijuana is sort of tuned up to sort of get as much THC out as you can. And mm -hmm. And I think that's really the difference is they are the same plant. They just went down different biological pathways. And um, all that happens is for us to use a product that's uh, from a hemp, uh, from a state licensed hemp grow is for them to test the plant and for there to be 0.3% or less THC by weight in that plant. At that right. point, the USDA basically calls it hemp and then we can move it across state lines. <laughs> so that's really- I don't even the, know that the, the politicians thing. step in and define science for us. <laughs> <laughs> right, so right. There is actually an article that was shown to be where this 0.3% came from. And it was just some arbitrary scientist who made the like the declaration and now it's been sort of passed right. on into government policy. So it's funny, right. just some random person. <laughs> yeah, and, and what's interesting is when we talk about medical marijuana, really CBD is really the cornerstone of that. I mean, it, uh, most of the solutions that we take a look at for medical marijuana treatments really have a heavy dose of CBD in it. Yeah, and I think that's the you know, it doesn't have psychotropic effects. Um, whether it's psychoactive is a different question because it does have calming um, nature, but it doesn't have psychotropic effects. So you can sort of take it in the morning. You can take it when you're working and all that stuff. So it has a lot of advantages in that way. But therapeutically, it does similar stuff where it's working on inflammation and pain relief. And I, I think they're, they have a lot of utility, um, you know, together. And then they also have utility separately. And I think that that's important to note is like each problem has to sort of like if you're trying to find a cannabinoid solution to a problem, it, you ought to look at all of these options. Um, right. I, I don't right. think it's, you know, I don't think my my fix is going to be your fix. Right. So right. it's such a complicated system. And right. like I said, all those different factors matter. So yeah, and what's fascinating is hemp has become uh, legal in the United States. Um, and again, that's a great political decision that affects telling science what to do. Uh, and I'm, I'm being critical because really we need to take a look at, at, at uh, deregulating all of cannabis. But uh, I think that knowing that when you purchase a hemp-based CBD product, it's, it's legal here in the United States. And it, there, are, there are various state laws. For example, here in Florida, um, Jenny Freed, uh, when she came in as the commissioner, uh, actually required uh, each bottle to have a label on it that told you what the what the, uh, the COA, the contents are in the bottle. And that's, that's Florida started that. And I think it's pretty much uh, standard in the United States now based on what you did. Yeah, we were really excited about that bill. We worked closely with Holly Bell, who worked alongside Nikki Freed. And even some of our stores in Iowa, for example, helped to become a model for how they wrote it. But when we see a good policy like that, that, you know, hopefully cleans up the hemp industry a bit and makes it so that testing is crucial and it has to be state like a third party test and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, we like to sort of tell other states that we're in, hey, you guys should check out this bill. We like it. <laughs> so sure. Now, uh, uh, we have one question, which I think we're going to answer, um, but uh, I want to go through this slide first. Really, when you talk about hemp CBD products, we hear something called broad and full spectrum. Why don't you explain the difference to us? Yeah, so broad spectrum is, is really just a good way to describe um, a full spectrum product that's just without THC. So it has the terpenes, it has heavier cannabinoids, and it has uh, flavonoids in there. Um, and that's key to note because there's, there are products out on the market that are zero THC that are actually called isolate. And that means they just have CBD powder in them. And we found that that is just not as effective to have these other cannabinoids and terpenes present. Um, and full spec is basically the same thing that I'm describing just with 0.3%, the federal legal limit for state um, transportation um, of THC present. So you add in that one more piece of component. Um, so we also have a whole plant um, version mm -hmm. that 
basically has even more heavy waxes and flavonoids in there too. Just we we do the entire extraction at subcritical temperature, and that lets you you know keep more of the plant present. So and I think the the full spectrum products, although they have a touch of THC in there, really at zero point three percent THC, um, it that's that's not a lot, but it is enough to be able to trigger the entourage effect in many cases. Exactly. That's sort of the, you know, there's discussion right now to move it to 1% and, and things like that in the hemp industry. But the way that we look at it, we get a lot done at this level right here at 0.3%. Yeah, it's just enough to sort of stimulate the entourage effect. So sure. now Jenny asked a question. It says, I have rheumatoid, arth rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. uh, what is best to use for my pain and inflammation without feeling high? Yeah, so we like a uh, topical solution is usually what we recommend. That's our best selling product right now. It's like a top topical cream. Um, the endocannabinoid system has a, a fascinating way that it interacts with the dermis. And, and but long and the short of it is that you can you can apply a topical directly to, uh, you know, it's a, it's a localized solution. So it's not like taking these oils that we're talking about right now, where you have this systemic approach towards inflammation and pain. It, it's more like you just put it exactly where your arthritis would be. So that's that's what we usually recommend um, as a as a targeted topical solution to that problem. And, and you would your topical you feel solution any... gets right to the dermis, goes right into the bloodstream. You have you have a you have one that's transdermal, right? Yeah, and 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 to the point, there's we we have it in broad spec as well. So we do have full spec and broad spec versions of that, but you wouldn't feel um, psychoactive effects at that level. Right. I think that's really important. You know, I had another question from Annette. She asked a question, has there been research yet on the effects of hormones in the body? And this is probably a good place to address that. Yeah. Um, was it, um, sorry, what was the question again? Um, says, has there hormones? been research yet about the effects on hormones in the body? Yeah. So there's a light. So we did a study with a bunch of different CBD groups um, where we measured testosterone and we saw light boosts of that. Um, again, women tend to be overlooked in these hormonal studies for some reason, uh, due to funding or whatever. Um, but I think that is an interesting question because that has been used for, um, endometriosis studies and some other women's health issues for, um, like menopause symptoms. So I think that it probably has an impact on hormones. Um, but again, it's probably going to vary by person to person and, and the age and gender. So I, that, I think that's an area that needs to be studied um, a lot more right now. Yeah, I, I don't think it's been, there's been some studies, but I don't think there's been a, a really, that's a real area that they should do more studies. Let's put it that way. And, and what's stopping us here in the United States is just the fact that it's very hard to do these studies. The government yeah. has put up some pretty hard, stiff barriers, um, which I don't know. Well, I know why they do it. It's, it's all political and it's has to do with the pharma companies and funding. But uh, I think it's important that we get the straight answer so we know what, what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. And I think I think you're going to see over the next decade the most amount of research that's happened on this planet around this plant. So that's exciting. Yeah. I was talking to a university professor two days ago, and he told me that there's been more, you know, more research done in the field of cannabis in the last 18 months than there has in the whole history <laughs> of, of the world so far. Which, that that's makes kind of sense. Research, you know, okay. That yep. sounds very interesting. Um, and it's, it's definitely going to be global too. So that's that's interesting. The whole planet's going to be looking at this at the same time. So, well, In fact, most of the planet's looking at it before we are, which I find fascinating. <laughs> in places like Israel yeah. and in, in England, Germany, or Spain are so far ahead of us. Yep. But that's a whole different issue. This is a, a kind of a wheel of cannabis. And you notice all these different CBD products that are in here. Um, I think that's kind of important to, to, to point out that all these different, all these different CBD products have a different, um, let's just say, attribute, and those are all in the hemp CBD products, right? Right, and that's that's what we focus on when you talk about like our quality. We always try to get as many of these minors in there as possible, is what we call them. Mm -hmm. So anything that's not CBD, we consider a minor cannabinoid, and we're always trying to boost the levels of those with our extracts. And we're always trying to find different farms that have different genetics that would, you know, and for then CBC. 0.3% of THC triggers the entourage effect, which is something that, um, again, it, it just makes it a little bit more powerful that, that's out there. Exactly. So, yeah, we try um, to, we try to include all of those cannabinoids as much as possible and have varying different um, extracts that, that target different uh, cannabinoids. That's really the goal. What's fascinating to me is a lot of people hear about 
CBD and THC affecting what they call the CB1 and CB2 receptors. These are receptors that are in the endocannabinoid system in your body. These are actual receptors. But really what's really interesting about CBD is it's really a lot more powerful than THC when it comes to addressing the receptors. Um, I, there's a list of receptors here, the, and I'll let you walk through them. CBD affects not just CB, CB2 receptors, but also a number of other receptors that affect things like blood pressure, your, your, your body temperature, aka pain. Um, we, this is something they've found in the last five or six years, right? Yeah, I think the oversimplification is on the left for sure. Mm -hmm. um, cannabinoids at this point are probably making more profound impacts on these other receptors that are on the right side. Um, and I think that that sort of speaks to what we're talking about with like the lack of research and all that. But it's mm -hmm. also exciting to understand that some of this stuff is for antidepressants, you know, uh, the GPR55 protein is utilized in that mechanism for anxiety. And, and I think that's important to note that CBD is interacting with those receptor sites. It just means that we're, there's, there's more to the endocannabinoid system parts that we don't understand, but they're also working on these traditional um, serotonin receptors um, and things like that. Sorry, the 5-HT is the serotonin receptors, but um, anyway, it, it basically, it's working on traditional pieces as well. So that's, that's kind of exciting when it comes to figuring out um, this entire puzzle is we is we have this traditional and the, and the ECS route that we can look at both of them. Sure. Now I got a question that uh, how can CBD help my dog? I think the answer is very much like it helps humans. The, this this uh, endocannabinoid system, what you see here, is identical in 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 pets, dogs and cats, right? Yeah, and I think I think that's that's a part that um you know we have to map out a little bit more to figure out exactly how like the differences between them, but at the doses that we're at, we're seeing profound effects from all of our customers that are using it for pets. Yeah, which is, which is really, really interesting. Now, and, and what's interesting is, you know, you have the endocannabinoid system in your body, which is what we see here. We mix it with photocannabinoids, phytocannabinoids, excuse me. And what happens is that's where you're able to be able to help regulate your appetite, sleep, pain for both you and also for your pets. You know, there are synthetic cannabinoids out there like Marinol, but I really don't talk about them and I really don't recommend them unless you're under a direct and strict control by a doctor because they're THC only and that's really not part of our discussion tonight. Yeah, I think the problem with synthetics is that, you know, unless it's actually made by a pharma company, you're, you're not so sure about the process that was yeah. used. Yeah, you're careful. Yeah. Well, what's interesting, especially with tincture drops, is we have our phytocannabinoids and endocannabinoids. And what's interesting is when you take them into your body, you take that CBD oil, it really goes into your fatty acids. A lot of people perceive it goes to the CB1 and CB2 receptors, which it actually does not. Um, it goes into your phytocannabinoids, into your fatty acids. When your brain, again, just go back to this nervous system, says, hey, Houston, we have a problem. What it does is it triggers those fatty acids to become long-term fatty acids, and they get sent to your bloodstream to that part of your body to address that particular issue. I think this is a fascinating way you, you work yourself. And one of the reasons it explains why there hasn't been anybody who's ever died from using this. Yeah, I think the safety is uh, enormously important too. And for pets, there's been some Cornell studies that were very, very high doses in older pets. And they looked at the liver toxicity and it was fantastic. So there is a liver enzyme that um, is an important, um, the CYP450 receptor site. Um, that's something that they were, you know, if there were going to be toxic issues, that would be where it would happen. And sure. those those studies have all been with really, really high doses. So yeah, to your point, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's best to be like, you know, the common sense, we haven't, we don't, we don't see overdoses of this plant. <laughs> yeah. I know in giving, in giving pets CBD, it's, it's really relatively safe because really it's not something that's going to hurt you. I do know the people that have given pets cannabis with THC in it, that's a yep. whole different story. And I, I don't yeah. recommend that at all. Pets are extremely sensitive to THC and not something that I recommend. Yeah, that's important to note. <laughs> at this yeah. point, that is, uh, there may be some utility but we do not know enough about um, THCs right. and, and, and pets right now. So just CBD. When it comes to your pet, stick with CBD, please. Uh, yes. If you love them and you want to keep them, <laughs> let's put it that way. Uh, and of course, this triggers, when you have that little bit of THC in there, it affects the entourage effect. And one of the things CBD does is it lessens that psychoactive effect of THC. 
So that's why when you ask the question, they ask the question, I don't want to get high, CBD will actually help to, to reduce that. Yep, it sits in the binding site and it doesn't directly bind with that psychoactive receptor site, but it does enough to block THC from binding just by existing in that area. Yeah, we're not going to get a whole lot into the uh, different components of, of, of cannabis with the cannabinoids, terpenes, and flavonoids. We'll do that in about two weeks. We have our Medical Marijuana 101 webinar. But uh, it, the fact that you're able to put all those together really provides a better and a more nutritious product for the, um, for the pet, for you. And I think also this is what defines a high quality CBD versus a regular CBD. A lot, as you mentioned earlier, a lot of the isolates are cheap, but they don't yep. come with the terpenes or flavonoids and candidly, a lot of the cannabinoids you need to be able to address your issue. Yep, exactly. That's, that's the, uh, as I say, the gas station version of those. <laughs> Yep. So let's talk about uh, your your products, your SunMed products, because there's a number of them that are out there, and a lot of people are asking, Can it, does it help my does it help my 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 uh, my, my pet? Um, tell me about your tinctures. Yeah, so what's our... interesting is your tinctures are not only broad and spectrum, you also have something called Trim, which helps me lose weight. Yeah, so we kind of like focus it around what that what what we're trying to get done with that tincture. So we started the company and. We were just very broadly making tinctures that had really good cannabinoid profiles. And the trim is a good example of what we've been doing recently, where we we found it, uh, the extract was studied for a weight loss study. And so we just mirrored the exact parameters of the study and put that into a tincture bottle and used that to great effect um, all across the country. We had so many weight loss stories, but basically the same way that the munchies work with THC uh, Delta nine, where you don't understand when you're actually full, it, it's called satiation basically. Um, and that, that, um, that receptor or, or whatever's in charge of that behavior um, in the negative way, when you get the munchies, we can actually reverse that by um, antagonizing that receptor or making it not do what, the munchies we're doing. So we actually do the inverse of it with uh, THC. Um, it's called THCV. So yeah. it's just a it's just a little structural change, but it does the exact opposite of what Delta Nine does um, for hunger. So, so why would you make a water soluble in an oil? What why the two? Yeah. So form factor is really important when you talk about exactly what we're saying is like you know what product is best for me. So the oil is you know takes a while for it to work, similar to like an edible better oil base. Sometimes it takes an hour or two for it to uh, have onsets, but it's a much more sustained absorption. So it'll last maybe seven to eight hours where the water soluble will be, you know, in minutes you could feel the impact, but it may only last for a couple hours. So those are important things that we think about when we're talking about like anxiety, right? If you have, if you have anxiety, you're going to need immediate relief. You don't have time to take an oil-based product and wait sometimes. So that that's sort of like why we have these varying things. Um, and then we also, our water solubles um, seem to work better crossing the blood-brain barrier as well when they're in an emulsion like that. So we have them in a liposome when they're in a water-soluble form. And basically it's allowed to zip through the body quicker um, and interact with um the neurological system more. So we recommend that for seizure patients that we've had, and we've seen great outcomes with that as well. And it's very compatible with uh, coffee, tea, soft drinks, all those yep. kinds of things, right? Yep. Yeah. Just simple of like, I like to take it in my tea is a reason enough to <laughs> grab a water soluble. So it is, we're just trying to make it easier for you to find whatever version it is that you want to take. And sometimes we see more profound effects just because the the way that it's formulated. So, sure. yeah. Let's let's talk about edibles because we have edibles here, both not only for um, people, but also for pets. We'll address pets in just a minute, but um, uh, the edibles are really important. I think the, the main difference is a, a tincture oil goes into your, uh, goes uh, into your mouth and it's absorbed into your bloodstream. The edibles go into your stomach and get absorbed through your stomach glass. And so it takes a lot longer to work, like a tincture will work in about 10 to 20 minutes. An edible could take as long as an hour. But when the edible does work, it works a lot stronger. Uh, can you kind of explain what your products are doing and how that works? Yeah, so the edibles are, um, we formulate with pectin, which um, is a vegan alternative to gelatin. Um, mm -hmm. But it basically helps um, 
it'd be a little bit more active as well, we're finding. So yeah, our edibles are about 45 minutes for onset. Um, these two products specifically, we have CBG and CBN. Those are two different cannabinoids that have very different functions that are outside of CBD that are also non-psychoactive. Um, CBG is like stimulating and focus driven um, and CBN is sedative and works great at night. So, you know, these are examples of just utilizing different parts of a hemp extract and dialing in and increasing the amounts of these other cannabinoids that you get through genetics and through extraction. Sure. And, and I think they're very effective. I know a, a number of people keep them. They, they, uh, my, my mom is the edible queen. Um, she keeps them in her purse. She goes around. She lives in California. And uh, she, I know she keeps them with her all the time. And it's something she, um, she uses. I know she finds it very effective. It's easy for her. It's yeah. much more discreet than the tincture oils. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And it's, it's really important to have food in your system when you're taking an edible, since it is, sure. like you said, goes to the stomach. So after dinner. I want to point out also, you talked about your topical cream here. The topical, yep. the key is, it's really, it really is, it, it, it gets through the dermis. In other words, it's, it's transdermal. It goes right into the system. A lot of the topicals out there go on the surface, but it doesn't get into your bloodstream. Yeah, it's unfortunate, honestly. Um, a lot of people, like, the, I don't know if it's just passed down from, or ease of formulation, but a lot of them are, use emulsifying waxes or beeswax, and they're called salves, and they kind of work, but they just don't quite penetrate to the level where that we're hitting the endocannabinoid system. So, yeah, like I said, this is our top selling product. It still remains number one, um, and it's, I think it's just because it just gets down to those receptor sites and works right at that localized and it's area. Easy to use. And it's yep. very easy to use. Yeah, people can really understand it without much trouble. So now one of the things that came up when I was looking at your company is you're you're working with a lot of professional teams, but you actually are now the official C V D sponsor for Pickleball, um, which I found very interesting. Yeah, so pickleball is an emerging sport. Um, we're in Florida, so obviously we all see it all around, like all the tennis courts are converting over to pickleball. But really, I think an important part of that partnership was, A, they understood CBD right away, and their athletes were already using it. And a lot of them are retired professional tennis players or, you know, retired, um, you know, uh, workers in general, and they just are getting back into athletics or things like that. So a lot of them they're our target demographic and we want them to be using this topical as much as possible. And when we had the partnership, and I think we talked about this at a conference we were at, Mark, we don't just want to have somebody's name and just like them holding up the product. We want them to use it day in, day out. And we want them to really understand, you know, what it is that like, what, what differentiates it from the rest of the products on the market. So. Yeah. And I know you're working with a lot of other teams and a lot of other leagues. Well, I'm not going to bring that up because that's something that's coming in the future for you all. But I know it's a, it's a hot topic in athletics right now. Uh, that's why yeah. we're having a webinar on athletics. I think it's in October, October 26th, I think, just to talk about that, because I think that's going to be, um, that's going to be I think, really important. Um, uh, the, the athletic world has been, let's just say, waiting for uh, CBD for a long time. Yeah, like a natural plant-based solution works really well for athletes that don't really like dealing with synthetic stuff. So. Right. And, and a lot of people, I think, I think using athletics as an example, a lot of people say, well, it hurt me or will it help my pet? Will it help my dog? Well, uh, you know, the two top Olympic athletes, as far as uh, performance, you know, uh, 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 Michael Phelps and, and Usain Bolt um, are self, they're the Willie Nelsons of the Olympic world. Um, and they, they have done very well and they're still alive and well and, and doing well. Uh, and I want to use that as an example. If people are concerned about using CBD, it's not something that you should worry about. You're not going to die from using it. Let's put it that way. Nor if you're using the right CBD product, are you going to get high? So I think that's something that you got to be very careful. Yeah. With. And especially like in this topical case, I mean, it's kind of silly to, to be like a topical is going to get you high. You know, the, the intended yeah. use of the topical is just therapeutic. So. Right. So let's talk about pets. Um, you know, we've talked about us. We know there's a lumber thing that will help us in a lot of different ways. I know, arthritis, uh, pain management, inflammation, uh, you know, I got bad knees, it helps with that. Uh, but let's talk about our, our, our furry for our fur friends. Tell me a little bit about the endocannabinoid system. You, you mentioned even fish have an endocannabinoid system, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think that's, that's so 
interesting that this stuff was undiscovered and there were probably veterinarians that could have solved, you know, seizure problems or whatever by understanding this more, but we have it now, so we should utilize it. Um, they definitely have an endocannabinoid it. system and it definitely functions the same like us. <laughs> I'm absolutely shocked that it took the medical community until 19, eight, late eighties, early nineties to really do the studies in the, in, the, in the endocannabinoid system and admit it existed. I mean, they found it in the 1940s, which they should have found it 100 years ago, in my opinion. Um, yeah. But I just find it interesting because, again, Houston, we have a problem. What does Houston do with it? They never answered that question effectively. Right. They kind of beat yeah. around the bush. They, um, they, need, they needed that that key piece. <laughs> yeah, it's there. So when you talk about homeostasis, why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Because that's where your body goes back into balance. You, you feel good. You're, you're not just not just physically, but also emotionally. Yeah, so this is another one where – you know, we take we take what we know from humans and we just adapt it to pets. So homeostasis, like we mentioned, is going to take time. It's going to change um, as the age of the pet changes. You know, if there was a traumatic event, um, there, that's going to change homeostasis. But in general, what homeostasis means to me functionally is that you should take your time with dosing and you should titrate up. You should start low and go up. Um, you should never try to flood the system and be like, well, this isn't working. I'm going to add more take your time with one dose and take, take that dose all the way out to two to three weeks or, or however long you feel like you, you can go um, to see exactly how it's affecting your pet. Cause after day one, day two, you're not going to see the homeostasis impact or, or how long it takes for this stuff to work. Um, and I think that's a key part of the pet market is that you're used to these things working right away or monitoring a new uh, product right away. You have to take time with this stuff. Well, this is a natural approach, but you will see the pet getting better. You will see the, them livelier. You'll see them happier. You'll see them candidly less stressed. Um, you'll, you'll see them progressively getting a lot better and staying that way. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for like, a, I mean, we're going to probably touch on the 4th of July anxiety thing, but it's amazing when you see your pet um, change their behavior over time due to cannabis because you, you know that there isn't an, a placebo effect that's happening. Right. So one of the questions that comes up is what conditions can CBD help with my dog? Um, here's some forms of, of CBD and also some areas where it helps, like, for example, with mobility and, and joints and, and, and pain. Yeah, so we um, were one of the first groups to actually use non-CBD cannabinoids with pets um, based on some studies that we saw. But basically, we add in CBG on the move and easy and uh, that helps with joint and inflammation even more than CBD does. Um, and then we add in some functional ingredients on top of it. Um, and then the same for chilling out, we do that with CBN, that sedative um, cannabinoid that works on sleep. So, you know, we have one that's for mobility and for daily regimen use. We have the chilling out that's good for nighttime and then for high anxiety moments, car rides, um, you know, uh, for the 4th of July stuff, like I said. So we have people um giving us amazing testimonials all across the country for these products specifically um and these just came out this last year and we've had amazing feedback on them right and i think also in, in the case of inflammation i know is, is i know i had a couple of old english sheepdogs and as they got older you know they had hip problems and a lot of it came from inflammation um, i did give them cbd and it did help them quite a bit yep yeah we see pets that have not been able to climb stairs in months right. um be able to do that um, we see pets that are high, strong anxiety, just calm when they see a new person come into the house. Um, our, our generic oil-based stuff, like we we're talking about, that's all the way to the right. And that's just great to add into food. Um, and, and that one, you can, you can adjust your dose, your dose very simply. The other ones are set doses. So you're going to have to, you know, give one or two chews or two to three chews, depending on the weight of your pet. So, and, here, and people always ask, what do I, how do I dose? What do I do? I think this is a good chart for you. Yeah. So this is like what we've sort of developed over time to sort of match with the literature. And then, you know, nobody really knows the dose of our specific cannabinoid, you know, profiles as well. Like we said, how much more effective is it going to be with all those different components? You know, this is what we've arrived on with our with our stuff right now, with the feedback from our customers. So, um, it's basically a milligram um, per uh, per serving, two servings a day, 
and every 10 pounds you go up a milligram basically so um yeah and, and this is good because you got to start low like i said um you might see profound effects at this level and then there's no need to increase until um maybe a tolerance builds up anyway so um this is just a good place to start and i think anybody who says you need a lot more than this hasn't really read on uh how full spectrum or how broad spectrum products that have all the different plant components differ than the isolates that are in the literature. Sure. Now, again, it, it makes sense that the bigger the dog is or the bigger the pet is, I should say, uh, you know, the more product that it, that it takes. But also I know that in humans, at least myself, about every uh, six to eight weeks, I take a day or two off and let my body reset. Um, is the same how should, should you do the same thing with your dog? Yeah, if you start to notice, like, um, maybe it's not as effective as it was a few weeks ago, a few days ago, then uh, tolerance reset is really important. It's probably more important in humans, to be honest. Um, we don't really see a bunch of tolerance resets with our pet users, but that could just be, you know, a simple thing where they maybe forgot it a few days here and there or something like that, that maybe acted like that tolerance reset or they traveled or didn't have it on hand. So um, but if you are truly taking it every single day, you should take a tolerance reset every month or so for a couple of days. Sure. Now, one of the question becomes, and we've had this, this question came up, what's in the product? Why don't you explain how people can find out from your, your certificates of analysis and how they find out what's in your products? This is really yes. key because I found you're yeah. one of the few companies that really do this. Yeah, I think exactly. that that like the pet industry overall is under um, regulated and most of the products don't even go through what we have to go through when we test for cannabis products. So we test for pesticides, heavy metals, um, residual solvents, um, any other um, materials uh, like non-organic um, factors that could be in there. Um, and, and that's just different. <laughs> Nobody's really testing for that stuff. When, when you're giving your dog a pet treat, those things are probably in there in some level. There's probably some lead or something like that in there if it's a natural product too. So first off, we have to approach a manufacturer who's working in the natural pet space that's willing to, for us to test all their stuff. <laughs> so that was hard enough, but just getting our extracts into them um, and having these other ingredients, green-lipped mussel, um, chamomile, passion flower, these are all cutting edge sort of natural solutions for pets. And they work really well. If you look at the rest of the ingredient deck, um, we have sweet potato, um, apple cider vinegar. So those are just like the inactive ingredients, but they're super beneficial in some cases for pets, coats and stuff like that. So that, that was the goal is to find a product that can work with CBD, a natural plant solution, um, and can be tested and, and, and use these different cannabinoids that aren't just CBD in the product. So we're really happy about this formulation set. And on the side of the, the bottle and the side of the product will be a barcode, um, actually a uh, QR, QR code. code. Yep. And if you, if you take your, your smartphone and you scan that, it'll take you right to the test for that particular product. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So it'll take us to your, our testing page and then you type in the batch that's on the bottle. Great. And I think that that's important. I, when I was doing a webinar about two quarters ago, I, I was looking at CBD products. You were the only ones who did that. And I, yeah. that, I commend you for that. Because again, if you're putting something in your body to be able to address a particular situation, get yourself a quality product. Will it cost you a few dollars more? Yeah, it's going to cost you 10 bucks more or something like that. But you know you got the quality and you know it's there and it's going to do the job for you. I mean, buy the product, it'll do the job for you. Don't buy half a solution. It's just my gut feeling. So, yeah. And, you know, the testing stuff is expensive. So I think if it if it's a really, really cheap product, you can almost guarantee that they haven't gone through the actual testing that's required. Yeah. The other thing I like about your product is you've, you've consulted with one of the top um, pet cannabis uh, professionals in, in not just the United States, but the world, uh, Dr. Yep. Silver. Yeah, he is, he's a rock star in this space. Um, and again, he, he's a champion of broad spec. He was the one that really helped define, you know, how CBD and hemp should be used for pets. Um, and he's open-minded. Like he, he said, similar to what I've said, where it's like THC could be important, but we should just, you know, because we know some pets are very sensitive, we should try to avoid that. Um, mm -hmm. But he works in all, all natural organic um, formulations. And again, he's a champion of plants being really important for pets health. And I think that makes sense. You know, animals, yes. just like us, we 
co-evolved with these plants and built an entire body system that <laughs> interacts with it. So we ought to try to utilize it. Yeah, he's been he's been in this field for a long time. He's pioneered a lot of things and also um, is really the one who has brought the light that in many cases, the cannabis solutions work better than any of the pharma solutions that have been out there. I mean, he's really a fascinating person to listen to and to, and to research. Yep, he has amazing talks out there on this space. And yeah, he he just sort of, hemp is just another ingredient that he thinks is useful. So that's what's cool about him. He's not, he's not gonna give like a biased hemp approach. He actually, you know, will be critical of it when he needs to. So it's cool. Sure. Well, let's talk a little bit about SunMed itself. I mean, who, who's behind this company? Who, how did you get started? I mean, why did you, you talk a lot about quality and the work that you do? And I think the testing you do is just absolutely amazing. But it really came from it really came from a, a desire, a homegrown desire. Yeah. So Rachel Quinn um, and Marcus Quinn are the two founders. Rachel founded the company um, herself when she was using CBD, and it was the only way to find. Uh, relief from Crohn's disease that she had had for years and you know she was it was affecting how she could be there for her family and CBD got her life back and right when that happened um, she wanted to share it with the world and Marcus her husband is the most um, entrepreneur person I've ever met (laughs) and he figured out how to make this all work um, and do it the right way and go all the way to the manufacturing level and um, created his uh, first store in Bradenton, Florida. Mm-hmm. And from there, we've grown out, like I said, to 40 something states across the country. So it started with Rachel's passion to share it with other people. And it came out of Marcus's frustration when he realized the industry had a lot of problems with it that needed, you know, some, he wanted to just do it the right way. So he went right after those gas station CBD. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. But also, also, I, I, I can't stress enough the testing that you all do. I know that I keep bring coming back to this and the people watch the webinar are saying, why does he harp on that? Listen, um, there is a lot of junk out there. I mean, there is, when I got involved in the hemp business or in the marijuana business and was looking at hemp seven, eight years ago, this, the market was just littered with junk and it's still there. That's the problem. So yeah. you guys have really, you really have gone through that. Look at your labeling, for example. Yeah, so yeah, this is um, again, one of those QR code labels that you see on the left. And then you'll, you would type in the lot number that would be there. Um, and it takes you to an ISO accredited laboratory test. And all that means is that they've been certified by an international body to test for cannabis. And if they do not report properly, there are heavy fines for that lab. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it it's a DEA run lab as well nowadays. So it's all heavily scrutinized. And again, that's where the expense comes from is these labs are expensive because they have all of these standards that they need to hit. But that's the key to our testing is it goes off to another group that has no affiliation with our company that we have to hit all of these targets with, so. Sure, and especially for your pet, you know, you don't wanna have a, a problem um, with them, that's for sure. Not yeah, you, you don't wanna have Delta 9 present, for example, and you can't yeah. really guarantee that for some of these other pet products on the market. You hit the nail on the head. That's weird. So you right now you uh, you have how many locations in the United States? I think we're in the mid 400s right now. Um, during COVID, we sort of didn't grow a bunch <laughs> because mm-hmm. retail was sort of turned off. But luckily, we we were um, uh, deemed uh, I I forget the term uh, essential business um, from the Department of Ag because we were a food product. <laughs> So we were, we were allowed to stay open in most states. Um, and so um, we've sort of um, plateaued, but we're, we're expecting to expand even more and go even more internationally at this point. So um, and it all focuses around the formulation and then the passion from the owners to educate their communities. So places like Alabama, Georgia, they've all been really huge in that space. Great. I should also point out that here in Florida, um, we have a MMTC medical marijuana treatment clinic. So Florida is where you can go to and get your medical marijuana card if that's the direction that you want to head. Uh, but also my botanical wellness uh, carries, proudly carries the SunMed products. We just started doing that a couple months ago and it's have had great response from the, from our from our audience. Um, so if you need to pick up the product, um, go to My Botanical Wellness and pick it up and also use the coupon code MMWW15 and get a 15% discount and give it give it a try. I know a lot of people have been wondering, where do I get it? Where do I find the store? How do I get there? I'm not taking anything away from your franchisees. All I'm saying is sometimes it's easier to go online and order it 
Uh, I know that um, I know that uh, my wife has become a how should I say a shopper, a online shopper during the COVID <laughs> crisis. So yep. I think a lot of other people do the same thing. Well, listen, we're going to wrap this up. If there are any questions that the audience has, please let us know. Uh, we'd like to be able to answer your questions. Um, and uh, Tony, do you have any closing comments? No, I mean, I think I, I appreciate the challenge um, that consumers face when they're dealing with hemp and figuring out what's the right way to do it. But I would challenge every company that produces a hemp pet product to at least have testing, like you're saying, but also have the right dosage and have the right secondary ingredients and making sure everything is sort of thinking about your pet first. <laughs> it shouldn't yeah. be it shouldn't be just adding ingredients um, without really function. So that's what we focus on the most. And I know as a practitioner, which is what I am, I want to make sure that people get a product that works. It works consistently. They can they can they can purchase a product that works consistently and it's safe. And that, that's what's really important. And, and I think your products do that. And that's what we try to do with my botanical wellness is we have doc, the, the doctors are the people who chose the products that are in there. And it's something we have that's safe for a lot of people. And I, I'm going to wrap up by saying, I think CBD is really the cornerstone to the whole medical marijuana market. I think it's, it's, there's a lot that we're still learning from it, but there's a lot that we also know. And it's something that with your pets will help you and will help them. Um, and it's safe. I think it's something that we really, really want to take a look at. Um, Tony, any, any last closing comments? I want to thank you, for example, for, for doing this. I know it's taking some time out and away from yeah. the family tonight, but uh, no, this you. has been this has been great. I really appreciate the format. It, like I said, I think when we were talking about this, it feels more like a podcast, which I like that setting more than, you know, but it's cool to actually be able to go back and forth <laughs> on a slide together. So sure, I appreciate that. And I want first of all, I want to thank everybody for attending the webinar tonight. Um, I know that it's something that. Um, hopefully is near and dear to you. Please feel free to contact us if you need to. You can send an email to event at marijuanaaware.com. Uh, and and you can, it's a link that's on our website. Uh, by the way, we will follow up this webinar by sending you a uh, email that has a copy of the video, a link to the YouTube uh, video. It'll have the copy of the presentation. It'll have all the resources and all the discount codes that are out there. So you'll be getting that in the email uh, as a follow up to this in the next day or two. And it'll make it easier for you to be able to do that. So I'd like to thank everybody for uh, being here. Uh, a shout out to our moderators for Lee and also Leah, who um, have been really helping us in the background. Thank you very much. And a uh, final shout out to Alyssa Kutera, who came up with the idea of doing these and uh, has really helped us quite a bit. So I want to thank everybody for joining us. And I hope everybody has a great, let's see, I think we have a great weekend coming up. Thank you very much.